on a Caribbean island, a nuclear power plant is to be erected against the will of the natives. The islanders defend themselves against the plan. Rallying a small secret resistance group under the guidance of their love goddess Papaya, a tropical beauty. This gradually ensnare the engineers of the project with the aim of gathering information about the planned power plant. Then the engineers are brutally murdered involving an act of cannibalism. In this exotic paradise, socio-critical journalist Sarah spent her holidays. By chance, she gets to meet the engineer Vincent, who is involved in the construction of the power plant. The two are unaware of the bloody goings on and on a small excursion meet Papaya. The seemingly friendly locals lure the couple to a traditional ceremony called Celebration of the Red Stone, where the two are administered drugs and made docile. Days later, Sarah is abducted by two perpetrators of the organization. From this, she learned that Vincent is to be murdered and she herself to be spared to report on the suppression of the inhabitant. While Vincent surrendered to Papaya completely and is later murdered. Sarah falls for the male leader of the rebels and begin a passionate love relationship with him. This love affair awakened the jealousy of the Bai Papaya who seduces Sarah into another tender and erotic romance. At the end of the film, the organization succeed in winning Sara for their cause. Director Di Amato take his lease to the Caribbean for the first time, but this in turn would lead to a long line of films shot there, including the infamous porno holocaust an erotic night of the living dead unlike those two films this one here remains sopko throughout but as with many of the director's film the subject matter bounces all around a reporter and a nuclear power scientist are on the island having some fun when they meet the strange but beautiful papaya. What the two don't know is that papaya might be a voodoo goddess ready to use her love to have things do her own way and let's just say she doesn't want any nuclear power plant on her island. Whether or not you are going to like a film like this solely depends on what you feel about the genre at hand. D. Amato not only mixes the voodoo and horror genre with the romance and nudity but he also throws in some action, drama, 
and even a silly ritual dance. Those expecting to see a cannibal film are going to be disappointed because that title was pretty much thrown on with the exception of one guy who takes a bite out of a human heart. The only other way this is connected to other cannibal movies is the fact that many animals here are slaughtered on camera. Two dead pigs are gutted and a chicken dies during a cockfight so animals lover might want to stay away. As is also usual, the director throws in all short of love and nudity but none of it is overly erotic and after a while it gets rather tiresome. The director also let scenes roll on and on for way too long and this include one where our couple is walking around with nothing happening for at least 10 minutes. With that said, the women are attractive here and the story is mildly entertaining if you know what to expect. The opening scene is ultra violent with a big splash of go. So these reasons might make people want to see the movie. Even though Italy was never much of colonial power, Italian exploitation filmmakers of the 60s and 70s seem to really be trying to make up for lost time in exploiting the third world. From the Mondo films of the 1960s to the gut churning cannibal films of the early 80s. You just couldn't keep these guys out of the jungle. Since this was also the period of the rise of the erotic film, it was almost inevitable that there would be an Italian genre of black exploitation or third world exploitation films. These films are kind of erotic travelogue where a white European tourist couple go native. Usually after being seduced by a native woman, they engage in ritualistic dancing, they eat raw meat. They have a lot of interracial and bi romance, which is apparently what Italian exploitation filmmakers thought people in the third world did all day. The most famous of these films is Black Emmanuel with Laura Jameser. But the most famous filmmaker is Jody Amato, who eventually took over the Black Emmanuel series and added such wonderfully descriptive title as Black Orgasm and Porno Holocaust. D. Amato had two things going for him. He was an excellent cinematographer, so his films always look far better than just about any other product, soft or hard. He also had an appalling lack of good taste. While there is some metaphoric connection between love and cannibalism, there is literally 
nothing erotic about cannibalism what the amato was trying to do was incorporate two kinds of illicit thrills that don't really go together that well there are some hot scenes here for instance but it's hard to enjoy them after the very first one culminate very unpleasantly in a scene of cannibalism on the other hand though people watching this as cannibal film will probably be bored stupid with all this gratuitous romance after the opening scene the acting is pretty unremarkable the exotic lead who seduces the european couple is pretty hot i guess but looks a lot more latin than black the white female is played by a sipalan who was in the famous valerian barapsi cul film the beast and managed to turn in an atrocious performance even though she had no dialogue she is not even really that attractive until she takes off her cloth as for the guy well the guy hardly matters in movies like this the plot involved the native woman papaya who as part of some kind of anti colonial hostility is seducing and murdering every white man she meet for some reason though when she meet this couple she decide to take the woman on as a kind of apprentice jodi amato seems to be at least answer to jess franco as most of you no doubt no this means he made a ridiculous number of exploitation films and porno like franco 2 his output usually has the feeling of a man with a little bit of talent making a film with great speed and little concern for the end result in fairness franco did at the very least direct some interesting and stylish erotic horror but in the case of di amato it simply trash all the way love goddess of the cannibal is an exploitation movie in the guise of a cannibal flick presumably it was retitled to this monica to cash in on the brief cannibal craze in italian cinema say that it must have been repositioned to exploit this craze after the event because the movie has extremely little flesh eating action what it does have though is lots and lots of romance and nudity there are several endless soap opera pummel that are surprisingly dull all things considered the best part in the film i thought was the native ceremony where some naked people get down and dance to some hilariously inappropriate 70s euro punk sadly there aren't to any other highlight for anyone who is not the amato disciple the pacing is pretty terrible and not a whole lot really seem to happen although the caribbean location is admittedly quite diverting 
and does give the film a certain exotic flavor. It stars Maurice Polly of Rabbit Dog fame. It's bit of an artistic fall for Maurice, working under the great Mario Bava, only to then be prancing around with his John Thomas flapping about in a Jody Amato flick four years later. It must be said that alongside Jess Franco, Jody Amato is one of the undisputed king of exploitation. His films such as Anthropagus, Beyond the Darkness, Images in a Convent, Caligula the Untold Story, and his sleaze filled Black Emmanuel sagas are bona fide classic of the genre. Papaya, Love Goddess of the Cannibal is one of his lesser known titles, which has now been made available fully uncensored for the first time on DVD by the fine folk at Severin Film. Maurice Polly is part of a team of geologists who, for reason unexplained, are installing a nuclear reactor on a remote Caribbean island paradise. Before long, Maurice unexpectedly bumped into his old reporter friend Sipalan, who just happened to be vacationing on the island. When the couple pick up a hitch hiking native named Papaya, she tells them of an ancient annual ritual happening nearby and they decide to go along and check it out and end up getting much more than they bargained for. Papaya opened with probably one of the best scenes in the film. Island Lowport Papaya seduces a bearded geologist in his heart by rubbing fruit on his body, then castrate him with her teeth. This is the first of two scenes of cannibalism in the film. The rest of it is pretty much held together with an abundance of love set against a picturesque tropical backdrop and a vague plot which involves the native protesting against having a nuclear reactor built on the island by having papaya seduce and kill all the geologists involved. The title of the film is very misleading and the name on the actual print is Caribbean Papaya, which makes much more sense because as mentioned above, there are only two very brief scenes of cannibalism, the aforementioned one and another which is during the cannibal ritual and involve the eating of a sacrificial victim heart and some dead pig being graphically gutted. One thing there is no lake of though is love and nudity. Nordic sleaze princess Sipalan gets her kit of plenty and so does Melissa Chimanti who plays local temptress papaya and looks a little like transvestite actor Ajita Wilson, which can be either a good or bad thing, I guess depending on your orientation. The romance can sometimes be pretty graphic for Sopko, and there is plenty of variety from 
interracial coupling to threesome and even a full blown cannibal orgy underscore with some irresistibly funky disco beat ultimately i can't say this is a must have the amato film it's basically a mediocre soap opera with some wag cannibalism theme thrown in for added shock value for sipa land fan boys or the amato completist only this slays past from notorious director jody amato for the second time and found it an improvement over my first viewing the english title love goddess of the cannibal is misleading the only two act of cannibalism throughout the whole movie consist of a woman papaya biting off a man's organ and a voodoo priest bite into the heart of a human sacrifice in fact i would struggle to even call this a horror movie instead it is more of an eco thriller with lots of sleaze romance and nudity expect much full frontal of both male and female right from the off much of the running time is made up of soap scenes felt that they started to become a bit too repetitive plus being the 1970s the women sport the natural look downstairs as well as melissa spending much of her screen time naked the lovely sipa land does too